So I needed a pencil holder and instead of making one or buying one, I figured I'd try to make one with a 3D printer. So I went to a Thingiverse and searched for pencil holders. I ended up finding a Deadpool pencil holder. Here I'm just showing you what I go through to get the files for the 3D print. Uh, basically just click on the thumbnail and uh, give a shout out to the person who made the files, Pitbull in this case. And then just click on the download, uh, save as, and I like to save it to my desktop. All the files get saved in a folder and uh, one of the things you have to do which I'll show in a little bit is to take the actual STL file that you're going to be using for the 3D printer and uh, save that onto your desktop and you do that because when you open up Cure and you try to open up the file if it's in another folder it's not going to recognize that as a STL file. Uh, so next I open up Cura and I've already set all my parameters. I have uh, a video for that. I'll link that in the description down below. But we go to file, we go to open, and we just search for the Deadpool file, and we click open. And you can see the file there populates pretty quickly. The red sections there are where the Cure software is going to add supports. I've enabled supports because this has some overhangs. Uh, one of the things that I found through trying to print this a uh, couple of times is that I changed the infill to 5%, which makes it less or, or makes it a shorter print. And I also discovered that I had to print it on a raft because of those supports that I just mentioned, uh, which you'll see in a little bit in the preview. Those supports don't, uh, if you don't have a raft for them to attach to, they just keep falling over because they're so tall and so narrow. Uh, they end up getting in the way and ended up breaking off a couple of times when I tried to print it. Um, here you see the software is preparing the G code for the, the 3D printer. Once it's done, it tells you how long the print's going to take. In this case, about 16 hours for this print. Uh, here's a quick preview of what it looks like. The light blue sections there are the supports that were added for the overhangs. And the dark blue section at the very bottom is the raft. And this is what it looks like, or what it will kind of look like as it's printed. Next, you uh, save it to a flash drive. With that done, then we just uh, shut everything down, just go to file and quit the Cure program. And then I like to just double check my uh, flash drive to make sure that the file is actually there and there it is. So next we're just going to take the SD card and put it into the printer. Now we just have to go through the different menus and find the file. So we go to print from SD card and we scroll down to the Deadpool file and we select it and the printer starts to warm up and then it starts to print. Uh, this print actually took about 16 hours, a little bit over 16 hours to finish and it was a continuous 16 hour print. I was really happy with how the print came out. The raft did its job and the support pieces held. You can see them uh, break off here in a little bit. Everything kind of pops off. Next it was time to remove the support pieces. I tried to use just my hands to see if I could get them off and uh, I was having a hard time so I ended up using a small pair of pliers and just uh, pried them off and broke them off. Most of the support pieces came off fairly easily and there was some residue left behind that required further cleanup later. The eye pieces actually came off really easily and looked really clean once uh, the support pieces were popped off. I used an X-Acto knife off camera to clean off some of the residue left behind by the support pieces. That left uh, kind of a rough texture, so I ended up using some 320 grit sandpaper to clean that off. Also notice the top needs a little bit of sanding, so use the same 320 grit sandpaper to sand that down a little bit. Now it's time to mask off the figure, and I just used some blue painter's tape uh, to cover the parts of the eye that were going to be that were going to remain black. The contours of the Deadpool mask telegraph through the blue tape. You can see the lines fairly easy to follow and I just use that as my guide for where I need to cut and trim 
to mask off the black area. And then it's just the same process for the rest of the, the figure. With the masking complete, I then applied three coats of red paint. I was surprised how well the masking tape worked. I was expecting to get some bleed through since there's like tiny little ridges left from the 3D print, but actually it all came out really, really nice. I was very surprised on how, how clean all the lines were from the masking tape. I needed a small amount of white paint for the eyes and I use this trick whenever I need just a little bit of paint for touch-ups. Uh, I'll spray some of the paint into the top of the spray paint can. It's a little messy but it leaves me with some actual liquid paint inside that I can then apply using a small brush. This part didn't go as well as I would have liked. I probably should have used this smaller brush. There was a little bit of bleeding around the eye section there. I ended up cleaning this up later, which you'll see in a little bit how I touch that area up. Here you can see the bleeding I was talking about on the inside corner of the eye there. I ended up using a black paint marker with a fine tip to clean that whole little section up. Worked great. And last but not least, the beauty shots. Here's the different angles of what uh, the 3D print looks like. I'm really impressed with it. Uh, big shout out to Pitbull from Thingiverse for uploading the files. Now I got a really cool pencil holder for my desk. Thanks.